So what I want us to do is to start becoming more conscious, start choosing things in a better way for ourselves, and start creating a life that's going to gear us to really take advantage of the opportunities that are going to show up for us in the, the years to come. This podcast is brought to you by The Integrated Human. We work up, down, inside out to plug yourself into your potential. If you want to see what we are up to and what's next, sign up to our newsletter or follow us on social media. If you like what we are doing, we really appreciate it if you can like our post on social media and YouTube and help us grow. Welcome to the Big and Small Podcast. I'm Jason Shields, and I'm big. And I'm Marit Gabrielsen, and I'm the tiny one. Yes, and today I have the great honor. It's exciting. The pleasure of being in Amsterdam, sitting with a black belt master, a wonderful world traveling instructor, Rose L. Schroeni. Yay! That's how you say it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> We've been practicing. Thank you. I've been rolling my R's, practicing. I'm sorry. That was great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. No, I'm super excited about this. Um, this first of all, this is a first uh, live traveling. Can you say that? Yeah. 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 International. So We've been international, but the big and small podcast on the road. On the road. That's, that's right. True. On so the week. That's wing. first of all super exciting. And we have this beautiful person with us. She's, uh, I watched you um, from afar <laughs> for some years now. Um, I heard that what I know about you is that I know you have two masters, yes. one in movement science and one in, as a medical doctor. Yes. You, the rumor about you out there <laughs> is super good. Who, the rumor? What's the rumor? What's the rumor? Is you're awesome? Uh, yeah. Is that you're awesome? <laughs> I heard only good things about you. You know, mm. the community, people tell tale and who's the what and what they do, but uh, I heard only good things about you. Mm. That you are a kind person, that you are dedicated, uh, you're proper, there's not a lot of nonsense around you, uh, mm. and you're extremely good in Highly technical. I was so excited. I woke up, I was at 4.48 this morning, I was watching your first fight in the world, 2022. I was like, yes! <laughs> Amazing technical fighter. That's great. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh. So, so who, who do you think you are? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. well, <laughs> um, funnily enough, I got asked the same question yesterday by uh, Richard from Grapple Culture, so I had a little bit of time to practice. Oh. Nice. <laughs> oh, she's been cheating a little yeah. bit. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, yeah, but it's fair. It's, it's all about preparedness. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, um, I think if you ask who I am and how I would describe myself, um, it would be best described as a, a hyperactive introvert. Nice. <laughs> That's nice. And I'll just go with that. Yeah. 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 Hyper. Hyper. What you say? Hypo, hyper. Hyper. Hyperactive hyper introvert. Yes. Uh, how does that work out <laughs> for, for you? Uh, I think it means I get really excited, well, mostly by jiu-jitsu, because I think it's the thing closest to my heart. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm also an introvert at the same time, so it kind of works out because you don't really need to talk a lot when yeah. <laughs> you do jiu-jitsu, like the, the sport will speak for itself. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, how do you not end up in jiu-jitsu? Um, I started judo when I was small. I think in the Netherlands it's quite common to start with judo. It's yeah. like swimming classes, judo, a lot of kids start. Is that like soccer for in other countries? Yeah, I mean of? soccer is really popular too, um, but judo is just like a lot of kids will do it for a year or two just to get a little bit tougher. I definitely needed to get a little bit tougher because <laughs> I was really small and if you would like uh, shove me, I would start crying. <laughs> so, oh, judo, but, judo will fix that. Judo yeah. will fix yeah. that. Well, I'm not sure if it did okay. because <laughs> I remained to be the smallest person in the room. Yeah, uh, but also the most wicked badass ever. Not just at the saying. time though. I would okay. like cry okay. <laughs> going into competition. So I stopped when I was about 10, 12, I think. And then I did Japanese Jiu-Jitsu for a while. Mm -hmm. And then one day, I was 16, we had a seminar mm -hmm. of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and I really liked it. Wow. So you've been doing it since you were 16? Um, yes. Yeah, and, and how, how old? What, 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 what age of wine are you right now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 30 now. So. I'm 30, oh, beautiful age. Yes. <laughs> that's, when, that's when we start to kind of really get the, the flavor into the wine. Yes, know? that's it, that's I it. I believe so. I'm not yes. one, so. Yeah, okay. <laughs> 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 okay. Oh, so you've been doing it for, for 14 years. Mm -hmm. And you have been practicing as a medical doctor until Tuesday. 
Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we hit this podcast right on the the money. Money. Yeah. Because uh, people that's been listening for us for a while, we they know we love, we love transformation, we love development, uh, and we love people deciding stuff. Uh, we talk a lot about many people that life happened to them. They all of a sudden are 35 and have 15 cats and are 50 kilo overweight, and they go, I don't understand why this happened. I, I don't know what happened. Oh, they're 50 and they have this midlife crisis. Um, so we're wary for people making decisions. And as long as we make this decision, it's this conscious decision, it will go well, in my opinion and in mm. my experience, mm. because you, you go for it, go with an intention for it. It's not happening to you. It's not mm. that you got fired and then decided to. You actually now have decided after six years, right? Um, after six years of studying and four years of working, so exactly kind of successful ten years. practice. <laughs> ten years in. Taking, yeah. yeah, taking people. And everybody was like, "Oh, you you made it. Now you're you have the, your doctor and you have you have your practice and everything." And um, but then suddenly you wake up one day and you're just like, "You know what? I don't have it. What I want is jujitsu." Was was that what happened? Yeah. Um, How did you make that decision? Well, I think the the idea of uh, quitting my job was already in the back of my head for some time. Yeah. Um, I think it started happening after COVID when competitions came up again. Because mm-hmm. uh, during COVID there was no competitions, everything was kind of on a standstill. Mm-hmm. And then um, I did, like the first big one I did was the Abu Dhabi World Pro in 2021. So yeah. like last November. Cool. And ever since then competing has been going quite well. Yes. Yeah. Better than I expected actually. Um, and I think because of that, um, I kind of felt like, well, this is going really well. Um, I am 30 now, so there's like a, a, a limited time where mm. I can move in as a competitor in the adult division. Yes. So, um, yeah, if I want to like, get the most out of it, I think now is the right time. Um, but I also feel like it has a lot to do with how I... Um, like the mind state I'm in at this moment because that's also different than before COVID. Mm. So So can I ask what that, what the the change is? Well, I started doing a lot of, um, like working together with the sports psychologist. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Um, Yeah, and that made me um, feel more, um, like more accepting this part of me as a competitor, as an athlete um, than before. So I think if I wouldn't have done that sports psychology, um, like, uh, period. Um, I don't think I would have made the same decision. I mm. think it would have felt different for me. Mm. What, what did he help you with? Um, so, well, the reason I started it is because um, I was competing already before. I think I, like, I started competing to Europeans in 2015. Because yeah, I have a gold in Europeans, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, have, I have the same one. Well, the dojo she instructs in, doesn't know, she instructs got told and I can see up on the wall that there's a European gold medal yeah, yeah it was a blue belt it's beautiful time. it's yeah. beautiful yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that was my first competition in IBJJF and I won gold and it was really exciting um, getting back to your question uh, to why I started the sports psychologist so <laughs> let's not let's stay on track um, so I started in 2015 to compete and it's 2022 now and I think I started sports psychology in like summer 2020 because um, I felt like I want to change the relationship that I have with competition because mm. uh, being a competitive athlete is a limited time. Like mm. we won't do it in the adult division when we're 40 or 50 mm. years old. You shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just that's up for debate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, um, and of course everyone has goals and you want to get the, to the podium and you want to get the gold medal in like every major, but probably not everyone will get to that goal. Uh, even like the really good people, you will, like won't make it to the semis, won't make it to the finals. And I just don't want to look back at my competitive career and feel uh, regret mm-hmm. or uh, feel, um, en- like not envy, what's the right word? Um, like, I don't want to look back and feel sour because I didn't reach the goals that I wanted to reach. And you didn't do everything you could to reach them. Yeah, but it's not in your control 
Exactly. Whether you will get it. That's so, it. Yeah. You know, and every uh, season in life has its jewels, and you want to make sure that you're picking those jewels up. And right now, this season is physical activity and really seeing how far you can take yourself. Yeah, yeah, but that's the thing. So more focusing on how far can I get as opposed to um, getting golden Europeans and fans yeah, and worlds. That's it. Yeah. So I didn't want to look back. What are you capable of? Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. It. So I didn't want to look back and feel regret that I didn't reach the goals that I. Uh, had so I want to I wanted to uh, make my relationship with competition better so that's what that was my starting point to start mm. the sports psychologist that's awesome yeah that's really awesome I think a lot of people should should do more of that <laughs> it helped me a lot yeah mm. yeah I can't imagine not having done it or I can't imagine having continued without it because it changed so much for me mm. and funnily enough it like the results got better and yeah. I don't know if that would have happened uh, if I wouldn't have started the sports psychologist, because mm. we, we will never know. Um, but I feel like it's a byproduct of uh, this whole um, yeah course of trying to find a better relationship with competition yeah. and with myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think exactly. the, yeah. when you, my of the going into the pit part, I always find hard. And I, I have the same, I, I um, my competitions now are more for because we've been working, oh, COVID also happened to us. Yes. <laughs> and in COVID, I, was just, I told Jason, this is not okay. The way I'm competing inside myself in competition, yeah. it's not okay. Hmm. It's fine that I can meet badass women and, and we can have a technical and do it fight. But I'm stopping myself. I'm coming in too high. I'm coming in too low. I doubt myself. I have this voice in my head that, that kind of pulls me down all the time, now it's enough. Yeah. Can we look at that? And we did that for the last year. So I, I'm looking forward to compete now to get, see, have I in integrated some new stuff? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Will, I, will I manage to keep my focus instead of focusing on that other person or the person that's jumping over there or the person that's that kind of stacking like a bull over there? Slapping themselves. Slapping, yeah, exactly, exactly. So jumping up and down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, ah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Calm down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your energy is a little bit too high for me. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's, uh, I think many people, and it's, that's why I think it's very beautiful that you brought it up, that you went to a sports psychologist, because many young competitors, especially in Jiu-Jitsu, in my experience um, we don't talk about it because you're going to be so bad as is we're, we're not it's not a professional sports in many way mm -hmm. and we have a long way to go still getting paid in competitions one of them um, not having to pay to <laughs> compete um, but also the fact that if you com if you are uh, in Norway we have cross-country skiing if you are a soccer player you will have a sports psychologist with you. Yeah. Mm, just like you have medical needs. doctors and chiropractors and physical therapists, you're gonna, it's part of your team. You're gonna have ups and downs, but we don't have that in jiu-jitsu yet. And when we then are a young female, in my experience for myself, going into a competition, it's so much going on and it's so much emotion showing up and it's so much thoughts showing up. And then we not learn how to deal with it. It's more just fight through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and I mean, you have people who are better at um, dealing with those thoughts and emotions and everything mm -hmm. you just described. And I think I was able to deal with it quite okay, having been mm -hmm. competing since 2015. But I would just stumble upon the right mindset by accident yes. mm -hmm. and not know how I got there exactly. or um, yeah, what I was exactly doing. So I think the sports psychology kind of made me more aware mm -hmm. of... Uh, recognizing what was going on and then being able to deal with it better. And yeah. then you can activate it on purpose. Yes, yeah. and it won't be as good every time because sometimes I'll, I'll still be nervous mm. or I'll still be like not feeling it, mm. um, but I'll be able to recognize that and mm. kind of deal with it the best way that I can yeah. instead of getting overwhelmed and be like, well, this is not what I was planning to feel like. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, exactly. What do I do now? Yeah, yeah, right. I didn't plan this. This was yeah. not what I was yes. meditating yeah. on. <laughs> Well, I was meditating on Zen state, and this is not Zen. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, how do I get there? How do I get, I get there? there? I'm competing in 30 seconds. How yeah. do I get to third? How, where's Zen? <laughs> where are you? Give me a sign. Well, there was a, 
uh, a much misquoted and misunderstood uh, stood piece of uh, research that uh, talked about how if you take the top level competitors in pretty much any sport and you compare them to each other, that they're more physiologically similar to each other than they are their brothers and sisters. Because genetically, they're more like their brother and sister, but the expression of those genes, you know, you're the same weight category, you're about the same age, you're the same weight, you do the same activities, you specialize your body in a certain sport. So what really separates that one person from the other? It's gonna be their mind, it's gonna be their heart, it's gonna be their um, ability to collect themselves. And that sports uh, psychology, learning how to activate that consciously really is something special. It really is that winning edge. And I was watching you uh, fight this morning, and well, there's definitely Justin nothing. Said you were not watching her fight live. No, 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 Kicked some butts at four o'clock in the morning in Amsterdam City. Uh, well, that was not what happened. That's not, yeah. not true. It's called. It's not true. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> that's I, what everybody. But says. I was watching Flow Grappling. Okay, here we go. Let me preface this. Watching. At four forty-eight this morning, because I was so recording. excited. Yes, it was we're recording. Really but I was watching the technique. Practice. Man, there's absolutely positively nothing lacking anywhere there. Well, well fought. I was really enjoying watching it. Thank you. Yeah. So you're entertaining to watch. You're technical. You're fierce. I don't see that there's any way that that's not going to go well for you. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, and think now, no, you actually can have time for restitution. I'm sorry, what? You can have time for restitution. Yeah, it's restitution. like recovery. 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 Yes, yes, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You have to, you have to, I don't know if people understand this, but you have been... To be at the top level of any sports is, is difficult. But when you balance that with a full-time job, and a full-time job as a medical professional, List. You are dealing with people the whole day. And then you're teaching in the academy. You're teaching in the academy. And you are in, um, when you worked, you, I would imagine, that's how we do it at least, and I would imagine you do from what I know about you, is that of course when you are at work, you, you care about the people you see, the people you meet, and it can give you energy, but it also takes some. Mm -hmm. And then you're fighting against these people that only train and instruct, and they have four hours of restitution, recovery time every day. You didn't have that. Yeah, I'll dial it down a little bit because I've been working part time as a doctor. Well, okay. I, and okay. you can dial I was down, only teaching like dialogue. twice a week. So. Okay, 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 <laughs> well, good, but, good, good, good. No, but I see your point. It, it's so. But still, a lot of responsibility, and it so takes a lot of energy. Yes. Yes, hence the hyperactive introvert. Part. Yeah, right. <laughs> I get to training and be like, I have talked to enough people today. Yeah, <laughs> Let me yeah, just exactly. get my grips. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I think that I, I will. I have the same. I go up, and people always think that well, Margaret is always mad. And, and I'm like, I've talked to so many people today. I don't want to deal with your question right now. I'm here to train and leave, yeah. and eat and go home and go to bed. Mm. Shh. <laughs> yeah. you, you have to be with people, and, and I love living with people and working with people. That, that's what I want to do full time uh, more. But it takes something. Mm -hmm. and, and then when you now have that not on you at this moment for some time at least, then uh, I think you're going to be doing very good. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. I'm going to put my money on roast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. Vegas, here we come. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to perform I'm putting all my money on <laughs> So what has been the biggest challenge um, in relationship to your mentality towards uh, competition? What do you feel has been the thing that uh, you are working with in order to get the biggest breakthrough in terms of being ready for competition and for that top level? Let's see. Um, I think mentally the biggest challenge is, well, we'll always have the... the, like the self-doubting negative thoughts mm -hmm. so like one like the biggest ones that will come up in my head will be um i will play small if i know i'm fighting someone who's really good mm -hmm. meaning that i will kind of predict the outcome of the match before the match has started yeah um which will then could be a self-fulfilling prophecy because if you think you will not perform well then you probably won't perform well, yes. well, as you say, like where energy, uh, where attention goes, energy flows. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 
So that will be one of the biggest challenges that I have. Yeah. Excellent. It's just basically getting the belief in who you are and what you're doing. And yeah. your right to stand next to these people who perhaps have been idols before and now suddenly you're fighting, you have your double, uh, double grips on them and you're ready to go. Yeah, and I kind of realized on the way that it, I thought it had everything to do with my opponent mm -hmm. who would be very good and decorated and haven't had a lot of titles, but I kind of realized um, that insecurity has more to do with me and mm -hmm. how I think about myself than how good my opponent is. So. Uh, I heard it somewhere in a podcast saying, someone saying, um, like the fact that you're putting someone else on a pedestal has more to do with your lack of self-worth and yes. self-love yes. than the fact that they are that good. Exactly. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah, we That's have correct. a tendency of idolizing and putting them up there, like you say. And, but like you say, it often because... The root is from yourself. It's yourself. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's this transition when you become, you know, uh, I, we joke around, my wife uh, said something really beautiful one time. She said, you know, before we were young and promis promising, but now we are what we promised. Hmm. And that's kind of stepping into the shoes as, you know, as you, as, as owning your spot on taking the planet. Ownership. Yeah. And taking really ownership. Owning it. Like that, that, and this is what we saw, this is what we could, this, we, we yeah. are here. And, and then believe that full out and believe that. That takes also some courage because my, in, in society, many was, will make you also small. It makes it difficult for you to not be small. And really, kind of, and to find the balance between owning up to your spot, owning up to who you are, and all the potential you have from your toes and out in your fingertips, because mm. you need to both toes and fingertips in jiu-jitsu to, to be able to perform. Good grips. Good, yes. Yeah, 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 no grips, no guard, right? Yeah, yeah. No guard. You, need, you need all of that, but you need to believe that through and through. And we often, think it mm. but we're not integrating it and really no nah, this is my spot let's go yeah mm. I'm it's yeah I'm really glad that you say that because that kind of brings us back to why I decided to leave my job because mm. I mean I've had doubts about working in the medical field before even during my studies I wasn't enjoying mm. the internships as much as the other students mm. which kind of felt made me feel like a little bit of an outsider, mm -hmm. <laughs> very much. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, this is so fun. Yeah, I yeah everyone last. would get really excited about being in the uh, operation room, and I would be like, well, <laughs> this is not my idea of fun, <laughs> but like, I'll did go. Did you see with that intestine explode? Yeah. Wow! Yeah, like, <laughs> like, like, whoa, well, not yeah. that fun. And that yeah. kind of went on throughout my studies and then yeah. working in the field, and I would see everyone around me go like chase their dreams within the medical field, like becoming a, a, like a surgeon, mm -hmm. a cardiologist, everything like that. And I didn't have those ambitions, mm -hmm. which kind of made me feel already, yeah, not on the same track. Mm -hmm. um, but I kept like not internalizing this part of me that, yeah, Jiu Jitsu is where I want to be. So mm -hmm. I kind of was with one foot in both. Uh, and just kept going because it because it worked. Yeah. Um, but then doing the sports psychology uh, made me uh, yeah feel more comfortable with this part of me being in jiu jitsu and accepting oh, that. That's accepting awesome. Accepting it and that's yeah. I think that's the word acceptance. Yeah. It's difficult and it sounds so easy and it's yeah but just accept it. Yeah. But we accept it in the head. Yeah. It's I talk to my or we have a beautiful group of young guys at home and and they, they think their emotions and they think everything. But it's not, it's not solid in them, mm -hmm. because they can accept the idea, the thought, but that themselves, they don't actually accept it. And then it's really hard to really own up to the, the fact. And then when you are on the, in the finals, if you haven't accepted that you belong there, mm -hmm. oh, no. mm -hmm. are you going to win then? Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Mm -hmm. and, and then you get back to the point that it's you stopping yourself. Yeah. yeah. That's, we can't have that. Well, there's, We're done with that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's this. There's a healthy mechanism I found often when when um, when we are young and promising and we're coming up and we idolize our heroes in in a sport. It's very healthy in a way because they give us something to try to to chase and achieve. But as soon as you land, like you have landed now. Mm -hmm then you see them as human beings because you've done the reps, you've done the hours, you've done the, 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 the right kind of uh, work inside, the right kind of work outside. And you see that 
they're human beings and that you've done all the work, so why not you? Why not you? And I went in always to my competitions uh, in volleyball, in basketball, in karate, in jiu-jitsu, in chess. Um, That's a lot of sports. Yeah, I've been competing been a, a, a lot. I have a great beard. I've done a lot a long time. <laughs> he has wisdom yes. in his face. Yes. He's not allowed would, to call himself old. But I have wisdom in my face. Yes. Yeah, right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. But it was uh, interesting because I always felt that when I was approaching my idols in a sport, I was approaching them from the perspective of I'm the underdog and I have nothing to lose. They have something to lose. They have something to lose because they're the champion or they're the one that usually wins here. But now I'm here, I'm taking my shot. And I know that they get up grumpy, they get up with messy hair, they miss a meal, they have bad trainings. They're just like me. I look at their fingers are taped. You know what? I did the work too. Let's go. You deserve it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And <laughs> yes, you, like, do, you like, deserve it. Yeah. You deserve it. Isn't that Al yeah. Royale or something? What? Like, they come, like you deserve it. Isn't that like May May Maybelline? Yeah, that's like, like, like a, a, makeup, commercial. a makeup commercial. Makeup commercial? Yeah, yeah exactly. It. Yeah, exactly. I got I got yeah. it. Yeah, send me sorry. this one. I'm going to find it. I, I'm going yeah, to hide this did, one. Yeah. I've heard that before. What yeah, commercial was exactly. that? But yes, you deserve it. Yeah, but it's you do. Yeah, you do. You do. But that has to do with owning yourself. Mm. But traveling with jiu-jitsu, uh, I was a lucky witness of the uh, women-only BJJ uh, camp that you're having here. And the level of instruction is world-class. It's, it's really good. The, the energy in the room is amazing. Uh, all the ladies listening to this, start jiu-jitsu number one, look up Rose number two, find her wherever she you're traveling the world now right yeah because what's what with your what's seminars Rose doing now yeah because yeah. <laughs> you quit your job on third tuesday tuesday, tuesday. tuesday. tuesday was yeah. my last day tuesday was yeah. your last day in the middle of the week <laughs> what <laughs> anyway tuesday was your last day at work what's rose doing now so well right now we have the women's only training camp so uh, it's running from friday to sunday mm -hmm. so today's saturday so that's the second day and uh, July kind of exploded because um, next week I'll be in uh, Munich to teach another training weekend from Friday to Sunday. Um, and then after that I'll be going to Portugal to teach another seminar. Uh, it's going to be like a day seminar and it will also be a little bit of a holiday but there will also be a small competition so it's <laughs> like yeah. three in one. And that will be all of July. All of July. Yeah. That's amazing. So are you are you uh, traveling? How how do you yeah, how how's the next year gonna look? Are you traveling and have seminars? Are you gonna shop more here in the academy? Yeah. So, um, well, taking off time from work now has been for two main goals. So that like the first priority is uh, me competing. So I'll be taking um, more time to like put work into my training and also more time to rest. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big one. <laughs> it's important. Um, and then like the biggest competitions that are lined up will be the World Pro in Abu Dhabi in November. Mm -hmm. There will be the Grand Slam at the end of Miami, but like World Pro will be the biggest one this year. And then next year it will be Europeans mm -hmm. at the beginning of the year and then Worlds. So those will be the, the big ones. Oh, they're going mm -hmm. to be fun to I'm follow. excited. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then in terms of the second goal, it's also to yeah make Jiu-Jitsu more of my job. So I hope to be teaching a little bit more at the gym, teaching more privates in Amsterdam. So like one-to-one -one training. Um, but also be traveling around to, to teach uh, seminars. Mm. Yeah. I haven't said, like, I haven't planned anything for after July. So it, being a very organized person, it's kind of all up in the air now uh, but oh yeah I'll see I'll see how it goes it's a beautiful academy uh, in Norway Voss yeah an academy, Voss. yeah that you need to come and visit you should come there that's where we are <laughs> that's where we are yeah yeah uh, uh, we are if we, maybe that didn't come out we know of course everything and sometimes you forget to say it but we are in Amsterdam <laughs> uh, for two reasons uh, one to talk to you which we're doing now awesome. and uh, for me so I can actually roll with some ladies um, so we are in the ladies only BJJ camp, uh, yeah. which is a f uh, organization fund uh, organization yeah company. What, yeah, would you say it's a like, organization? Uh, organization. Yeah. organization. Yeah. That you started. Yes. Did you start it alone? Um, I've worked together with some people. Right now, I'm running it on my own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
What's yeah. the goal with it? Um, well, I think the goal with it, um, how it started, was just to serve a niche, I guess, mm -hmm. because there's relatively less women in Jiu Jitsu than mm -hmm. there's men, and uh, we don't always have a lot of uh, women to train with. So um, I would be hosting this, uh, the, the camps to just get a lot of girls together to train mm -hmm. for fun. Mm -hmm. Like that would be the main goal. And over the years, it's gotten more and more popular. So um, yeah, I think it's great for girls to train together, meet each other, because uh, usually there's a lot of uh, people attending from all over Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's nice to get to know someone you um, never met before. Mm -hmm. And you, you have had, uh you are a world-class black belt yourself, uh, and you also have had Fionn Davis here. Yes. And now you have Elena, and her na last name. Is, we talked about her last name. Do you need help? Yes. <laughs> Mustam. Tak. But Elena, <laughs> black belt from Sweden. Yes. Uh, she runs Stark. Uh, yeah, she runs Stark. Uh, Stark yeah. In, yeah. With her husband Max. Yes. Yeah. In uh, in Sweden, Stockholm, I believe. Yes. And yes. Sam Cook as well has been with you. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Twice. Yeah. I love her. Yeah. I love yeah. her. First time she was a brown belt. Second time she was a black belt. Yeah. Yes. So cool. So yeah. it's so high level. Um, it's top level, not high level. It's the top level. Yeah. Of it's the cream of the cream of the cream. cream. Of the cream of the yeah. cream. Yeah. And I'm just gonna say, talk about magnetic. You are magnetic. You bring people into your field for jujitsu. And I know that because you're attracting all of these other high-level people to work with. I look at the students and how charged they were. It was a beautiful day yesterday at the, at the camp. Uh, the atmosphere is amazing. And I got to experience something that I, it's like proof positive What's about proof? your proof, 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 positive. proof positive. And that means that we know 100%. When your mom comes to train with you, <laughs> yes. then you know you are jujitsu. You are that magnetic field. Like, I have been trying to get my dad to train jujitsu with me for so long, and he's just like, yeah, maybe next week. Yeah, maybe next week. Your mom showed up at the, and I saw her rolling. She's awesome. She has a crazy side control. Yeah, she, yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm telling you, it's crazy. And, and she's so enthusiastic, and she's so happy to be here, and she's so proud of you. You know, and, and of course, moms are proud of their kids, but like not all Some moms are have others. <laughs> mom, moms don't always have a good reason. She has a good reason in you and you're able to be a cool instructor for her as well. And that's to change that role when you're no longer a daughter, but you're a black belt instructor for your mom. That's so cool. It's really funny <laughs> yeah. to tell her off. Like, no, mom. Don't grab inside the pants. Stack <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no. the pants. No. This is how they do it. Disqualified, mom. Stand Disqualified. Stand Disqualified. Yeah, exactly. Disadvantage. Disadvantage. <laughs> mom, stop it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, that, that's, that's amazing. But martial arts in general, you know, something you wanted to, to, to do in the beginning to toughen up. What would you tell uh, young girls, women in general? What advice would you give to them in terms of how martial arts, jujitsu, has, what has it given you in your everyday life just as working as a medical doctor or just walking on the streets? So like, uh, how would you explain your, your transformation with martial arts? Hmm. Um, let's see, because sometimes people will recommend jiu-jitsu or any martial art to women uh, for the reason of self-defense, which I think is a very valid reason, mm -hmm. but um, I don't look at jiu-jitsu that way. I don't mm -hmm. think that was your question, but I just wanted yeah. to mention yeah. it, yes. that um, I don't like it when people say, oh, you should do jiu-jitsu because it's great for your self-defense, because mm -hmm. I think you should do jiu-jitsu because it's fun, yeah. not because I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not gonna like start a sport out of fear, mm -hmm. um, but that's just me personally. I mean, there might be some someone, person, women, I don't know, who, who will do it for like the reason of self-defense because they're scared or they already had a bad experience. But I think after a while, they will do it for fun anyways. In the end, I yeah. think, yeah, it should be like, mm -hmm. it's gonna be fun. Um, so like for me, that's the main thing about it. Um, like how, so you're asking how jiu jitsu kind of transform yeah you were saying that when you were younger you got into judo because you were the one that if you got pushed maybe a little bit you yeah. felt a little bit you, know, you felt you were smaller and and laughing yeah. because i can recognize myself yes yeah and, and, and as, you, as you work with with uh, um, uh, martial arts that perhaps that changed for you like your some kind of a robustness or resilience inside or str strength came from it or you know has it changed the way you tackle challenges and your career, for example. Yeah, um, I think jujitsu translates to a lot of areas in your life. So the beautiful thing about it is you don't see results right away, you have to work. Mm -hmm. um, 
and it might take some time for you to get better but if you stick with it if you're consistent then um, you will get there yeah. and I think that applies to any challenge in life uh, nothing that's worth working for comes easy no so <laughs> unfortunately but it's the truth um, so I think that's a it's a nice learning uh, like a learning school learning curve uh, to be on yeah there's also the, the thing that I find with, with exactly that is that in, in life you get you get a challenge. You it's pretty easy to avoid that challenge again. You just take another road. You, you change career. You, you change studies. You, you get you move to another city. You do stuff. But in jiu jitsu, that position that you keep ending up, it, it will show up. The next training, the training after that, you can't avoid looking at it because you can't escape it like the way we escape things in our everyday lives. Yeah. Because you it gets. It get right back into your face and, and at one point you need to fix that you need to deal with feeling uncomfortable yeah, yeah. yeah. that's it yeah and that goes again for anything in life like there mm -hmm. will be times and places where we will feel uncomfortable and like it's here you learn how to embrace it and deal with it mm. i think that's one of the best things it can give because it gives you can't give up mm. or if you give up it, it kind of doesn't work if you try to do you find of giving up doesn't work out that well you're not get, you're not gonna get injured or anything but you kind of need to deal with it because you're gonna end up in side control mm. you're gonna have a sweaty chest on your face that's just how it is <laughs> yeah not to take any uh, try it people it, you, the worst thing i say is, i know is when people call up to us and say hey i was wondering about this jiu-jitsu thing i wonder if i could watch one or training i'm like uh-uh you are not allowed to watch. You do it. You do it. Exactly. You that's watch it. and just tell them right yeah. up. Because if yeah. you watch it, you won't do it. Yeah. Because it looks strange. Yeah. It looks. It looks very strange. <laughs> it looks very strange. <laughs> you will not understand. You, you will won't not understand, understand anything. You like, will not who's understand. Who's winning? Who's losing? What? Looks like. And it looks uncomfortable, and yeah. and you are you you have sweaty people, and mm. you have you have you you so because we're so used, to, especially with COVID. In Norway, it wasn't a problem because we keep distance no matter what because we like our privacy, but. We're so so used to keeping distance from each other mm. that when you're on each other, it, it's it's kind of that's my private zone and I have my space and mm -hmm. you don't touch it. But you don't have an intimate zone in jiu jitsu. You are again sweaty chest in your face uh, with rash guards, so it's, it's good. Uh, Still sweaty, <laughs> it's sweaty. Yeah. It's even, even more sweaty <laughs> because the thing gets wet. But um, so I tell them always, you are more than welcome to come, but do not watch it. Yeah. Because you do not want to start it. And how I know it? Because my husband used eight years to try to get me to start because I watched first. Oh. Yeah. Yes. So, and I said, you, you need to, and I said, we, we, we handshake and said, you need to give me three sessions. Uh -huh. Give me three sessions. Do not come if you can't give me three sessions. And I go, what? Because first time you're going to feel very uncomfortable and you're going to do hip escapes on the ground and you're not going to understand what it is. And because you're not used to moving on the ground. And you're gonna feel awkward and everything's strange and it's gonna you're gonna be so out of your comfort zone. But if you come to three, you see the pattern of how a class is done, you see the pattern and kind of how it works, and I'm gonna promise you then you either gonna then you can make the decision, either you love it or you hate it. And uh, everybody stayed. Yeah, everybody stayed. <laughs> That's great. That's, That's a good because it, yeah. it's kind of I if you just w do not watch jiu-jitsu people, try it. Because mm. watching it, it's not the, <laughs> not the best commercial. Uh, then, then kind of competitions are better because you get highlights and people flying and takedowns. But when you look at how jiu-jitsu training is, yeah. and the sweat and the hair yeah. everywhere, yeah. it's not the most attractive sport mm. to start. Yeah. Mm. I, I have a, a question for you. You know, you have a, a background in sports science. Yes. Yes. Um, many sports have kind of like a, a culture. For example, uh, boxing has a certain culture, or wrestling has a certain culture, um, and they have ideas about what works and what doesn't work in that culture that may not be well-founded in sports science. Mm -hmm. So for example, in sports science we know that basically resistance training is good in it's good for your physiological preparation for every sport, actually, even even table tennis, you know, golf, people do squats and deadlifts, for, you know, it's 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 really old fashioned to think that 
if you do boxing, for example, lifting weights is bad for you. But that was a thing that they said a lot Yeah, they think you get slow. They think you, exactly, which is absurd. It's not correct at all. Um, What have you found has been the major mismatch in the jiu-jitsu culture with sports science? Overtraining. Yes, exactly, exactly, overtraining. That's it. That's an overtrainer. That's correct, exactly, it's an overtrainer, right? Yeah. Exactly. How how, how much do you think the the average athlete in jiu-jitsu trains? The average jiu-jitsu competitor? Yeah, high Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, because sometimes people will say that they train like three hard sessions a day, but (laughs) I'll only see the pictures on Instagram. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. exactly. Three hard sessions a day. Every day? Yeah, exactly. Did you really? Exactly, yes. You're either lying. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. You're either lying or on a lot of steroids. (laughs) It's like, we don't know which. Um, I don't, like, I think... It's really hard to say, but I like from the people that I know that train, they will do like two sessions a day. Um, yeah. Yeah. And with very variable intensity as well. Mm-hmm. You know, they'll yeah. do a technical session and maybe have it three or four. It don't on Instagram though. No. Yeah. It right. But, but three or four hard trainings a, a week. How many hard trainings a week do you think, like hard sparring do you usually use? Um, well, we have open mat on Sunday, which was like an hour of sparring. Yeah. And then um, I train like at this moment. So with my current work schedule, yeah. Um, I will train uh, five evenings. Five open. evenings. Yeah. And is it the same intensity each each of those evenings, or is it more like you you take maybe a uh, a day where you're doing more interval explosive work in your roles because you're black belt and you're high level, which means you can pick your trainings and you can actually get your trainings out of your roles so you can pass a guard 70 times in five minutes or you can or you can set yourself up into a grindy position where you have to work you know do, do you do you are you conscious about how you use your sessions or is it just you take what comes um a little bit of both i would mm-hmm. say because i'm the smallest one in the academy yeah um so and a lot of people here are kind of big yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> not all of them but yeah. we, like we, we have a good bunch of, of big people yeah. so I don't always get to choose uh, like I don't always get to decide how my training is going to be because those are depends on my partner I see yeah. Brad like, yeah, 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 exactly. so like, yeah. I want right. to go fast I'm, but I'm a hundred <laughs> kilo giant dude yeah. I'm like I get the chair I'll, I'll yeah. decide yeah. my training I had a high day at work and you yeah. go you know today I would just like to do some technical headquarters positions and then you come to the training and then Everybody's blue belts, and they are 95 and up. Kilos. Kilos. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. let's do restitution another day, and uh, let's go boss to the walls today as well then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I don't always get to decide that. Um, but um, I am planning to structure it a little bit more, mm. that I can kind of, yeah, have more ownership on yeah. that. Yeah. That's very yeah. cool. You are more free to do that now also, I, I would imagine, with the new mm. schedule. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and I like to cross train as well, so that I get to train with other people than the people inside of my gym. So Excellent. I'll have more time to do that as well. And I really like it. That's really cool, and that's a, it's genius having the women's only uh, training camps that you're having, mm-hmm. uh, because you also get good training partners. Yeah, yeah you, you attract, yeah. you know, and you get high level repetitions. Um, I found that um, people in lower weight categories are able to train more often and often a little with more intensity than people at higher weight categories just because of the relative strength difference. Um, A person that's uh, rolling at 60 kilos with another 60 kilo person, uh, though they're lifting their body weight in a way, they're, they're working with their body weight, the relative strength is a lot higher than a guy at 100 kilos. The absolute strength is much higher at the topper range, mm-hmm. at the higher range, but they also get more exhausted faster. Yeah. <laughs> even even the top level guys, right? So like a Bouchesha, for example, and those guys that talk about you know going hard all the time and not being a Nutella fighter, you know, just you know being being sweet and and and, and easy. Uh, those guys actually generally will get two or three really hard rolling sessions a week. If they do more than that, they start to break down. Um, but I found that people that have a lower weight category often can go harder more often, which is good because when you're the smallest person in the academy, you have to go probably a little harder just to, to survive larger people, I guess. Yeah, but at the same time, um, I really do notice a difference if I train with like women mm-hmm. um, who are about my size. Mm-hmm. Um, I can go, like you say, like really hard, high pace, lots of intensity, yeah. and it will, like, I will endure it much better than uh, doing the same 
like high pace with a guy who's maybe like 80 kilos yeah um and then even after the training i won't feel like a truck ran over me exactly <laughs> yeah, right. i can do it again the next day yeah i don't think it's necessary i think like um i'm not an expert on uh, strength and conditioning uh structuring so i i work together with someone who, who like things uh, about that with me um but i don't think uh now when i have more time on my hands i'm gonna um do more sparring sessions mm -hmm. i think i will uh, try to because uh, i don't think it's necessary um and i will probably burn out if i train like that every day for a long yeah. period of time yeah yeah exactly it, it yeah. takes some you need restitution yeah, you need <laughs> yeah. That recovery to get recovery yeah. yes that's the the thing and that's the thing i i'm amazed but that, that kind of that's one of the things that kind of lack in jiu-jitsu uh is we don't is the rest mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. your your body needs rest you can do whatever you want but it's still a physiological machine you need it needs fuel it needs different kind of things so i think it's um it's uh, going to be very interesting to see yeah. the next year I have uh, I have big hopes, mm. and uh, I think this is gonna be a game changer for you. Especially is to have the um, you know you have one focus. You don't have to think about your patients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, top yeah. of it. And they say don't take your work home. Although you don't, the care for them, the love for them, the worry about them, still there. Mm. But now you can kind of let that go a little bit and focus on this. Yeah, yeah. I have a little bit of a weird question. Tell is it okay? Okay. <laughs> I'll get, that's the last question then. All right, all right, yeah. all right. But this is an important one for me. Um, I'm also a, a coach, and I run the academy in Bos, and I have many excellent athletes, and I've had very high-level females, including uh, my favorite modern philosopher here, Marit Tuzdal Gabrielsson. Um, I've gotten uh, one of my fighters to a world champion in blue belts. Um, we're very lucky with this small environment that we have, but we don't have a lot of female fighters. And I would like to ask you, what is the major issue, concern, or challenge that females have in a jiu-jitsu environment? Because you meet so many, and you've been in there for a long time, and you're a black belt, you know, you're a, you're a high-level competitor. You've been in jiu-jitsu a long time. So what is something that we can help bring attention to or help maybe start to solve for the for jujitsu and females in jujitsu that we can have more ladies hmm, let's see um well i think it definitely helps to have a female um at the top mm -hmm. in the gym yeah because it serves as an example so when a woman comes in she'll see that there's like the instructors there there's met met like male instructors and that there's female instructors and that they're equally there. Mm. So I think that serves as a really good example. Um, I didn't have that when I started, but mm. there was a purple belt girl. Her name is Jasmine, she's a black belt now. That was an example to me. So I think having role models really helps. Yeah. Um, because you can kind of see where you're going and you can see it's achievable and that like she can do it just as well as the guys. Yeah. Um, so I think that really helps. Um, other than that, I think just a welcoming environment helps as well. So like having a changing room for women. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I know some gyms don't have that. Yeah. Oh, we don't um, have changing room for anyone. Yeah, yeah, okay, well then it's equal. That's <laughs> yeah, fine. That's fine. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Yeah. But if there's a changing yeah. room for the guys and not for the oh, not for the nice women. Yeah. Have that. Um, I've been in some gyms. That's very strange. <laughs> I kick the guys out and put the ladies in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Now in our academy, everybody changing the stairs. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Except true. the instructors. That's yeah. welcome. You you get to change in the office, so you good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, we have a women's class here, which is really good. Mm -hmm. um, I think it kind of helps to lower the threshold for some women who feel more comfortable starting in a like an all-female environment. Yeah. But I don't think it's entirely necessary for an academy to have it because I feel very conflicted about it, to be honest, mm. because I feel it should be normal that we all like train together regardless of gender. Yeah. So having a female-only class kind of uh, reinforces the thought that women should only be training with women well, and maybe. women can train with men and, yeah and, and yeah. it also kind of separates the thing that yeah we have an issue with with this 
So we yeah, need like, a women it, only training. Yeah, I mm. think it's good to like just normalize that we all train together. I mean, if you take a step back and look at other sports like hockey or soccer, like yeah. women don't train with men because no. there's just so many women that like we have an entire yeah. like girls team. So that's like a maybe like 50 years into the future yes. it's going to be like that. Yeah. Because um, then it would be beneficial for ladies to train with ladies you have so many of them. Exactly. Yeah. So it would yeah. be you don't and want And that's who you're competing against. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. But right now we're not in that situation. No. And, <laughs> like we all train together, and it's good to like enjoy the sport together. So I know like a lot of uh, like a lot of gyms that have no women's class, and they're very successful, and they just have a lot of girls. So um, yeah, I think that uh, having a role model is is important. Yeah, uh, at, at our gym, is we don't haven't had. Uh, well, I'm the highest ranked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in yeah, the, you are. So you're probably the role model. Well, yeah, she yeah, is. Well, she she's a great role model. Uh, she is. <laughs> she is, and and not just no, for the female, but also, no, no, yeah. but, also <laughs> but also for the guys, but yeah. also for the guys. Uh, but she's, um, she's a beast. Mm, well, she's now I'm blushing over her. Anyways, yeah, um, she's a beast, and, and and when I say beast, I mean that in the the most uh, amazing <laughs> and professional way because she shows up at all the trainings. She does all the work. She her behavior on the mat is epic. Her follow-up of people who are new and helping people who need it are is 100%. It's just that's the kind of professional that you want on the mat. That's the kind of person you can look up to. And again, doing all the work. Hmm. Mm. Uh, my point was, I think it's <laughs> thank you. Uh, is that we? I think it's very good that to have that. I didn't have it, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, we have Jason, and he's been very uh, considerate about women coming in and. Thank you. The guys know that when uh, we, we, for instance, what we have done is that, I don't think all the guys like it sometimes, but because uh, we are very few, uh, mm-hmm. right now we are, uh, it's me and we have two other women that, that are actively training, uh, and that is we get pre, we get, we get pre, like, what's it called? Yeah, you, you always have a place on the you're, mat, you're meaning that it, the mat. Uh, ladies can always roll, meaning that if they find a partner and they want to roll, you, the guys have to move, they get to roll. Because we have a limited space. Oh, because you have a small space. Yeah, 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 we have a small space, so they get to roll as much as they like, uh, which also forces the guys to be considerate and also to roll with them, meaning that they have to learn how to roll with people who are perhaps smaller, perhaps um, uh, don't have the same muscle mass and Mm -hmm. maybe are white belts and have to be careful. So it's very good, actually, for everybody. And then you get the, it's very interesting because you see the, the big guys, they have to start using more movement, more pinning, instead of, like you said, run over trains. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. They kind of come in a like choo-choo trains. Yes. And if they go in a choo-choo train and they need me in the head three times, I go, I, I sit up and I say, feet. Yeah, bad, bad dog. Bad dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need me in the face three times. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> you need me three times. Don't do that. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. I go, oh. oh. And then, oh. so I, I do, I'm very strict that way because I'm. She's a little scary. I'm yeah, scared, you know. I am a little bit scary. <laughs> we have one of the guys who said next to me, just one, one person in this academy I'm afraid of. That's you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Intimidating. Yeah, very intimidating. I like to have, and it's because I, I, I'm doing it because mm. I know I can take three heads, three. Three knees to the head. Mm-hmm. I'm used to it. I've been doing it for, for six years now. And I'm a competitor. I get knee in the face. But uh, I don't know, Mia that comes in, she's not used to it. She cries when she gets shoved. She doesn't relate. deserve to have <laughs> knees in her head. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm doing it. And it sounds very strict, but I, it's kind of to de- you educate them. Yeah, it's about education. Because be they're not aware that they're doing it because they're going balls yeah. to the walls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're like, calm down. You're 30 kilos heavier than me. Hmm. Shh. I think it's really important, but that's like kind of a feel topic, I would say. that, And this goes for anyone who goes into the gym, male or female, um, that you feel comfortable uh, being there on the mat mm-hmm. if something happens, like someone like get, goes over your... like. Your personal boundaries or you get a knee to the face or you want to tell someone out that you feel you have the space to say so um but it's really hard to pinpoint like where you can and like why you can and why you can't yeah but i think that that's actually the power of being tiny and blonde because they are 30 kilos heavier mm-hmm. and 
I, and I'm, I am a higher belt, so I can go, what are you doing? Mm. But it's much, ha- much more difficult for the white belt tiny lady to go, what are you doing? What are you doing? But you should be able but to. You should, you should be, be able, able to, to but yeah. maybe you don't know yourself that much. Maybe yeah. you don't have enough technique to know if you, you yeah. did something wrong or did that person yeah. do something. I know when I'm laying in side control and not moving, and you knee me in the face three times, changing side control side, you doing something wrong. I'm <laughs> laying completely still. <laughs> Stop it. And it works. And I, I do it often if they do it, I do it in the middle of the row, or I have the next row with them. Mm-hmm. So we kind of don't finish this off with me telling them off. So we can see, did you listen now? Did you learn something? Mm-hmm. And because kind of, you correct and then we have fun. So I, I, I but that's what people find me very strict. <laughs> but uh, I roll with everybody now. So it's, yeah, they're really behaving good and they are learning from it. But mm-hmm. it you need to, like I said, you need to be able to, that's not right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You need to be, you need be able to tell them. No. That's it. You're, you're, you're so big and so small. Yeah. But also from the big person to the small ones. Yeah. If the small person is going crazy, then like, mm. anyone no. should be. Yeah. That's, true. That's a good <laughs> no. point. That's yeah. a very good point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nobody, nobody <laughs> loves the big ones like me. Like, <laughs> like, nobody people. takes it easy on me. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and now I know that you guys have great souls. Yes. <laughs> no, Simon, Simon, I'm the biggest. He's going to go, feed Marit. Feed. Yeah, <laughs> bad dog. Bad dog Marit. Marit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Stop taking Marit. Like, what's wrong? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, you're right. That's wonderful. Uh, well, we, you're open for seminars, right? I am. You are. Yes. Then I'm gonna add and put and do all my technical high stuff awesome. and put it in the description of the podcast, uh, so people can follow mm. you and get a get a hold of you. Uh, I would highly recommend it mm. um, to have a female black belt show you technique is different from. And this is not to disparage, course, but um, course, black belts, men, because you have, you must have technique because you roll with 80, 90 kilo guys every day. Mm. You must have technique. You have to learn to move yourself because you can't move your opponent in training. You can in competitions maybe, but not in, in training. So um, highly recommend because you get some beautiful details. I watched you and Elena move yesterday and the, te- the technical transitions. It's beautiful. So beautiful. So beautiful. Yeah. Thanks. So I mm-hmm. highly recommend it. Uh, uh, you're gonna learn a lot if you yeah. hire Rose for a weekend or a private. Rose, thank you so much for the opportunities to sit with you. Thank you for inviting me in to watch the the training camp. I, it's a great honor for me to be the, be here and experience it. Thank you for being an inspiration for my fighters, for Modit, for the people that you touch. Showing people that you can chase a dream that you can be yourself you can really go deep you can challenge destiny to give you the things that you need in your life thank you so much you, thank you for being brave um, to change to quit a medical profession it's brave to step on a mat is brave to have to start women's camp to travel to follow your dream it's extremely brave and uh, it's something, and these are conscious decisions, and I think it's going to be really well for you. I am excited for your future. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate you having me, and yeah. it was a lot of fun. Thank you. <laughs> so remember, you matter. Unless you multiply yourself by the speed of light squared, then your energy. But if you can't be energy, matter. Thank you for listening to our podcast. We hope you felt we added something to your day and hopefully your life. If you want to learn more, subscribe to our newsletter and find us at integrated-human.com. That is integrated-human.com. Integrated Human on YouTube and other social media platforms. Have a great day and thank you again for listening. Love, light and upgrade from us at the Integrated Human team.